Get the latest in Cardinal sports. Benny Rogers brings you the latest in scores and standings throughout the region. Cardinal Weekly starts now. Welcome to another edition of Cardinal Weekly presented by the Cardinal Sports Network. I'm Denny Rogers, the Sports Information Officer here at the college. This is a championship edition of Cardinal Weekly as we're joined today by Elena Lovato, the head coach of the 2013 and seven-time NJCAA champion Lady Cardinal basketball team. The Lady Cardinals won their unprecedented seventh title on March 23rd in Salina, Kansas when they defeated Central Arizona 83-71 in the national championship game. The Lady Cardinals were 36-1 on the season 36-0 on the court. And now let's visit with Elena Lovato. We're not even a year to date when you were named the head women's basketball coach here at the college, and here we are talking about having won another national championship. Describe the past 12 months for you. <laughs> wow, a whirlwind, a blessing, um, just uh, an amazing experience. Um, I knew in April when Dr. Flurdy hired me that this is where I was supposed to be. And from then on, I've kind of just been going with my instincts and, you know, assuming that God has a plan for me and he's going to put me in the path of the, the right people. So first couple of months, there was a little pressure, you know, finding the right pieces to the puzzle, finding my staff, um, who I was going to surround myself with to, to try and, and maintain the level of com competition that, you know, Trinity Valley has always had. And, and then the recruiting process, you know, just bumping into the right kids and feeling like I was signing the right, the right fit you know, for, for Trinity Valley, for the program, and, and for number seven. In his own right, repeating a national championship is not an easy thing to do, but to do so with a brand new coaching staff and an entirely mm -hmm. new team would seem impossible. How was it possible? The right pieces um, and, and the right chemistry. I think, you know, my staff and I have an amazing relationship. I, I have a great bond with both Gerald and Aaron, and then Gerald found Spencer. And I mean, just those three people around me every day gave me the strength that I needed to to do this. And then the kids, I mean, I I was very fortunate to find the right kids and, and they came in here with the right attitude, the right personalities. And I mean, we had our, our moments, you know, where we had to maybe discipline or do some things, but they're all totally bought in. And I think that they knew at the end of the day, they were here at Trinity Valley to win a national championship. So the chemistry just, I mean, it was amazing to get 15 people on the same page and that was it was easy you know so it was awesome you were blessed with four sophomores you mentioned the kids but you were blessed with four sophomores in victoria Wells, savannah carter shannon smith and crystal henderson talk about those young ladies and how important they were to what just happened here at the college oh my goodness um <laughs> i can't say how much they mean to this program and to me i mean they came in here took a chance on a coach who was going to try to help them get re-recruited to the next level and I mean, Shannon coming from North Carolina, playing for a Hall of Fame coach, Sylvia Hatcher, you know, Crystal coming from Jody Adams, who played for Pat Summit at Tennessee, you know, from Wichita State. Savannah, I mean, I got the phone call from Cynthia Cooper because Cynthia Cooper wanted to recruit her out of here. And then Victoria Wells, I mean, I was coaching at UNO last year. We played Marshall. It was my scout. So it was just weird how I already knew who she was when I got the email that she sent me. And, um, amazing attributes to the program, the leadership skills that they brought, the way they treated these freshmen, um, the competition, that the competitive and emotional drive that they have about basketball. And I mean, they're amazing in the community. I think they've definitely set the foundation for, for, for my program and my culture and the way I want to do things. And I mean, without them, I don't know that we would have won number seven the way, the way we did with the, with the, um, the amazing uh, community support, and I think they won everybody over. And well, no, it's no question. No doubt about that. They, they won me over from the jump, and I, I think, you know, the community loves them, and they're going to miss them. At what point this season did you begin to feel the season would end with a title as it did, or did you feel that way from the very start? Um, honestly, when Dr. Forge, you know, called me and, and told me that the job was mine, I knew that I had everything I needed here in Athens because I was here in 2010. I knew that I had the academic um, and faculty and staff support. I knew I had the, the good financial backing. I knew I had the support of the community. Um, I knew that, you know, Dr. Forge loves Lady Card basketball and he, you know, helped me in any way possible. I knew that the other coaches in the athletic department you know, would be supportive and not necessarily just, um, I guess, not support what I'm trying to do. And, mm -hmm. you know, with everything that I knew the job came with, I knew that that would be the ultimate goal is winning a championship. So, like I said, I put all my faith in, in God's plan and I, I, 
I knew when I when I signed the, the right kids that it, it was possible. And then when I saw the chemistry, just the way the girls came together early, I, I knew like we had something very special going on. And I think when we talked in, in October, November, you know, I, I had a feeling then that this was possible. It was just a matter of getting them to, to, to play together. In addition to being blessed with a great group of young ladies, and you've already mentioned your coaching staff, but talk more about those guys a little bit and just their strengths as coaches and uh, what you see in their futures. Oh my goodness, I couldn't have asked for a better a better staff to you know start my my program out here and, and to cultivate the culture. Um, Aaron Kaloff leaving Hill College to, to be an assistant and come out here and help me do this. I mean, we talked endlessly last year. I was recruiting a few of his kids and we just talked about how hard it was, you know, to to compete at the highest level, you know, in Region Five with a part-time assistant coach, no training, tra no training staff. Um, just, I guess you have 14 scholarships, but for the most part, I mean, this is an unreal situation for junior college basketball. I mean, we have an unbelievable amount of support. I mean, this program is built to win championships. And um, when I got offered the job and, and told Aaron, you know, what all I had to offer, he jumped on board and he was a huge um, asset early on in the summer, working the kids out with me, you know, while I was running around chasing kids. Um, amazing in the community people love him his wife is amazing his kids i mean it's just a perfect fit you know they they were great uh to come and, and take this chance on me and this program and then gerald um i had to recruit him for probably two months you know because mm -hmm. he, he came from a really good program out in kansas where he was very uh, close with the head coach and um, recruited amazing talent to johnson county kept him at the number one ranking all year last year came up short at the national tournament, but amazing recruiter, very well respected in the division one ranks. Um, they're both integral pieces to this puzzle that I know that it wouldn't have happened without them. Um, I know that they're gonna have some opportunities here at the final four probably uh, with some division one schools. I'm gonna support them in whatever avenue they choose to go. Um, they, they obviously know that this is home if they want it to be. Um, Spencer Robertson, my manager, I can't forget him. He is the best student assistant in America. Uh, 21 years old, won a national championship. So, I mean, this is a guy that we're going to see on TV in the future. I already told him, I was like, Spence, you might be on the big train before me. So I look forward to, you know, hopefully working with all three of them again. But like I said, I don't want to hold anybody back. And I believe that Trinity Valley is a great foundation for bright futures. And I think that they came here for that reason. And, if God, you know, plans for them to, to get something bigger out of this, this, this year, then that's amazing because I'll feel really good about that too. As we move forward now to the 2013-14 season, here we are already talking about that. What's the challenge that, 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 this lies ahead for the six kids that will be coming back off this year's team? My freshmen are going to be the most amazing captains and, and sophomore leaders that I could ask for. Um, they were, they were under these four sophomores, Shannon, Crystal, Vic, and Savannah, for a whole year. And I could already see the personality coming out of them. I mean, Rodrika Patton and Keontae Doty, they're my twins. Um, you would think that they've known each other for life, and I think that they're going to really set the tone as far as just being the vocal leader that we need. Um, you have Adu and Shalante who have already received All-American accolades. So I think freshmen are going to come in already looking at them and their work ethic and the way they go about things because they know that they're already respected in their game. Um, you have Dominique Brooks, who's probably the most amazing character kid on my team. Sweetest thing ever. She loves the community and she's just a great teammate. Uh, Julianne Ashling, I mean, same thing as Damo, just the best teammate you could possibly ask for. She works her tail off and I think she, she's ready to, to make that jump next year. You mentioned earlier about the, the Lady Cardinal fan base and the support you have here, but, but talk about that more in depth as we close out today. Oh my goodness, without the community, without my guardian angels, who, that's what I, I refer to my foster parents as, as my guardian angels, um, I know that this would be impossible. You know, they're the ones who actually invited me to come and apply to, for the job. You know, they wanted me to come back home. And the, the community here is so embracive. And my first year, I met special people who I kept in touch with. And, 
and they're the reason why I, I took the chance and applied. And then as soon as I got the job, they were there for me through thick and thin, whatever I needed. I mean, helping me organize barbecues, stopping by the gym to meet recruits, just to show the recruits how important they are to this community. And um, I think we've, we've cultivated an even bigger fan base from when we first got here. I know, you know, in November, if you watch video, there's not as many fans in the stands, but the closer we got to playoff time, I think my kids were so good with the community and I loved sharing them with people because they had great personalities. And I think, you know, the, the community has really taken a hold of my team and my program. And it's exciting because um, it's almost like something's trending here, <laughs> you know, and the whole chasing seven thing just blew up. and. I'm excited because I think people are already excited about Chasing 8 and I just, I know this is a great community. I think that this community makes a difference in the way, a difference in these kids' lives and I'm excited to bring some new kids out here to try to help mold and turn into amazing, you know, personalities that can move on into the real world and be ready for what's in store. Well, Lena, thank you for dropping by today. Thanks for a great season. We look forward to 2013 and 14. I know yes, you're already sir. working on it. <laughs> already working on it. I got some kids visiting in a couple of weeks, and I'm excited to share them as well because I think they're going to be a great fit for this program. Well, thanks a lot, Elena. Hope you were all with us Wednesday night at Cardinal Gym for Celebrating 7. Here are a few sights and sounds from the celebration. Uh, it's so impressive for the fact of, of two things. I mean, Trinity Valley, obviously, I mean, it's, it's a known thing. They've won championships here in the past, but nobody here that's sitting up here in these chairs that carried on this trophy from Salinas, Kansas, had been a part of one before. That's what amazes me, that in such a short amount of time that a, a head coach could come in and put together a staff and hit the ground running and bring in a completely new team and come in and dominate the country like they did. Trinity Valley. You know we killing this fans. Are you feeling this? I want to say thank you to everybody in this gym. Without y'all, we couldn't get it done, so thank y'all. That's going to wrap it up for this edition of Cardinal Weekly. I hope you'll join us again next week. For the Cardinal Sports Network, this is Benny Rogers reporting.